In a hot minute. Well, I haven't made any videos because for some reason my charger was acting up for the batteries for this camera. And I just now today figured it out. I just had to flip. So it's like you plug it into the wall, you put one battery in the charges. I just flipped it upside down in the outlet. The whole charging unit and now it's charging for some reason. I I don't know. I was about to throw it out, but I figured I might as well try that before I throw it out and it started working. Um, so that wasn't really the main reason, but um, I have made some videos recently, the past couple months, and then I saw that they uh, cut out. I'm like, uh, well, and I just didn't want to record anything. If uh, I don't know if it's going to work, well, now I know it's working. I got a full battery. Um, a lot's happened. A lot. And I got a lot. <laughs> so, the Mustang. Actually, let me talk about this one. I actually just picked this up, I think, uh, two days ago. I'm, like, super excited. It's uh, a vintage super bike of its time. This is a Suzuki GS1100E. I guess you could say this is one of the original sport bikes. 1983. But as you can see, it's in immaculate condition. I picked it up from an old guy down the street from here. Local. That's really the only way you can buy motorcycles nowadays. Well, if you want to be able to pick them up before the other guy. Yeah, I mean, this is... this condition is insane I gotta do a walk around it runs good I mean you can tell with the suspension it's a, it's a new suspension it's all maintenance very well but um, the technology is noticeable <laughs> I mean this this bike's older than me because it's almost 40 years old <laughs> it is one good-looking bike though very well taken care of fast as hell too it was uh, 108 horsepower, top speed, I think it's only like 140, but at 108 horsepower, that's some mega horses. <laughs> uh, fuel economy, I'm not too sure yet, and I, it's probably degraded. This has some mods on it, it's got pods, it's professionally tuned. Uh, you don't even really need to choke much, if at all. Um, cold start, it's very well tuned. It's tuned actually better than the Katana I got at the house, the newer Katana. Well, not very, well, newer than this. It's got a Vance and Hines exhaust system. Headers back, just straight headers, straight to the pipe. Just one hole set up into one. Got the baffle in right now. Seems to sound better with the baffle. Oh, I prefer the baffle. Running kind of late. <laughs> I'm running uh, like 10 minutes late. Probably be 10 minutes late to work. But, uh, what are they gonna do? Fire me? <laughs> One of the best workers. <laughs> no. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Better from an old man. This is what was on the key. The dumb man. <laughs> well, I got it insured. So, I guess I'm driving it partially legal. It's still registered in his name. I haven't uh, done the registration yet, but I got it insured. Um, anyway, so news. I got good news and bad news. And, well, I guess it's all good news now. Uh, bad news, a couple months ago, I was driving the Mustang. One morning, the heater stopped working. And I'm like, um, okay. So I go to my work, check the radiator, of course. You'd want to check that. <laughs> the cap is loose. And uh, it's t it's closed, closed where it's supposed to be, but it's just loose, like not sealed for some reason. Like I could just push it open with my pinky. I don't know how those fail or why. Uh, so I ended up getting a new cap and actually filled a whole gallon of coolant in there. It was tight and everything, nice. A couple days go by, heater stops working again. Cap's still tight, but I guess it was too late. And I blew the head gasket. And I know this because when I got home, I opened up the oil cap and found some chocolate milk. Uh, so, anyway.
engine engine ran good everything was good so I figured I might as well just get the head gasket replaced I'm not doing it <laughs> ended up taking it to a shop locally got that replaced fairly cheap I was expecting to pay more than I did labor only 800 bucks I supplied the parts so not too crazy actually I usually don't like windshields on bikes like kind of cruiser like bikes like this, this is kind of a cruiser almost cruiser sport or original sport and usually I don't like the windshield but this is actually pretty nice unless I'm just getting old <laughs> no so I got that done on the Mustang driving it home starts misfiring and there's no engine light so I don't know I was kind of got some weird vibes from that shop like maybe they turned permanently turned off my misfire codes somehow because nothing there was no engine light or anything to what they said ended up being a bad injector as well as the plug somehow all of my plugs broke I have no idea what happened there <laughs> Anyway, I got the bike back another week later, heading back to the house, just idling it in the driveway just to make sure everything's okay. Then I hear like a loud screaming and my throwout bearing went out. So I, literally, right after I got the, the car back. So I took it to another shop because I just felt like that shop was just trying to get money out of me. <laughs> just little things like happened to be going wrong. Yeah, and he actually charged me additional for the injector. I'm like, the injector was fine before that. I'm pretty sure they forgot to plug something in. Actually, that was the case later on. Down the road, so I got the clutch replaced. I drove the car for maybe 70 miles, and then on the road, started misfiring, but no engine code. So I, I really think, I don't know if, if professional machinery is able to shut off permanently engine codes, but I feel like it was shut off. Anyway, I drove the Mustang home and noticed that my spark plug wire was not fully connected to the spark plug. And I was told before I left at the first shop that you're gonna have to replace all your injector wires or you might hit a bump and then it might start doing that again, misfiring. And I, I feel like they set it up to be like that because, well, well, first of all, the wire shouldn't be dangling in there just close enough to where it's working. And then when you hit a bump, like how he was saying, I think that I think they set that up so that I would have to come back. And it was it was funny too because a few days went by and he's like, Are "You ready to come back and uh, I can work on your clutch?" I'm like, uh, "Yeah." So I don't want to name any uh, name anyone, any shops or anything, but I won't be going back there. It was a pretty good price for the head gasket replacement, but I would I don't think I'd ever go back there. So Mustang runs nice now recently at high speeds it did start grinding a little bit in fourth gear and i'm not sure why i was told that i may have to wear the clutch in i don't know i did tell the mechanic about that i just decided well i dropped it off and then he never got to it the whole day um but i just decided to drive it maybe a few hundred miles see what happens um this boy runs great I mean, suspension is whack, but this runs pretty good. Um, some good news, more, well, I guess it's gonna be like neutral news. Fun news, okay. Um, I did ta delete the cat on the truck. The K1500, 95 Chevy, that's fun. I did straight pipe it, um, but I did chop the muffler off and threw a, well, I just welded in a glass pack. Kept the original tip on the side. Um, it's fun to drive now. The Mustang, I deleted the rear cats, but I left the front ones just because I didn't want to be obnoxious. And I didn't want it to smell, because I have the Roush Mustang, so the exhaust pipes are right by the doors. I did leave the two Magnaflows, so it still has mufflers. Sounds good though. Uh, runs good actually too. It like runs a lot better than um, with the rear cats. I ended up getting I think 450 bucks 
for my two cats and then the truck cat. The truck cat wasn't really worth much, but uh, the Mustang cats, I got 400. So that was uh, pretty cool. I bought some headers, put them on also on the Mustang. That made a big difference power wise. And now to the good news. About a week ago, I got married. I know a lot of the guys would say negative things about it, especially uh, the guys at work. But uh, I was really excited, really nervous, um, but it was a big milestone, big big change. Um, I was ready. I wasn't ready last year. Yeah, this bike's fun. It really reminds me of my first bike. Um, I don't know if my videos are still on YouTube for like my first videos, hundreds of videos ago and years ago. I've been doing these videos for, I don't even know, <laughs> what, uh, 10 years, 12 years, jeez. I'm sure you could tell uh, how, how I matured throughout the years or not. <laughs>